Hi everyone, it's Brett from Path and Tarot, and today in this video we're going to be doing a unboxing video for the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition Tarot deck. Uh, this is a deck I ordered off Amazon and it just came in the mail recently, and I'm really excited to uh, open it up with you guys and have a look at it and play around with the deck for a little bit and give you an idea of uh, the, the card texture and how it feels. Uh, and so just before we open it, uh, we'll just take a look at uh, kind of the packaging just so you can see what you're in store for if you buy this. So it's just plastic packaging. It says, uh, here if I can get this up, can you see that? It says X Creative. There you go, it's in focus. So it says X Creative, and then there's a, a Chinese uh, symbol there. I think I saw this on Alibaba Express recently, so I, I'm not sure, not not really sure of the company X Creative, but you know it could have come from uh, a company doing drop shipping with you know the Amazon F FBA stuff. Uh, I'm not super familiar with it, but that could be where this deck came from. But it definitely came uh, from China by the looks of it here. Uh, so the packaging is nice, it's just shrink wrapped, so, you know, it feels, feels pretty solid here. So let's go ahead and open this up. Just get my little pocket Swiss Army knife here. And we'll just open it up. Just gotta get, make sure I get this in camera here. Alright, there we go that back up. Okay, so the shrink wrap is off. Yeah, it feels pretty sturdy. Let's open it up. It's kind of hard to open sometimes without... There we go. So it looks like the cards are just loose in there. They, the cards themselves aren't shrink wrapped, which is kind of cool. So it looks like the shrink wrap is just, it covers the whole thing. So let's just dump the cards out now and have a look at them. Let's just put that on the, on the side here. So this deck comes with uh, instructions by the looks of it. This is actually this is really cool. So this is a, uh, it's like a pocket version of like a guidebook for the cards here. So let's, let's just go through it and just see what it says. So based on, based upon the original and only authorized edition of the famous 78 card Rider Waite Tarot deck, original, original drawings by Pamela Coleman Smith under the direction of Arthur Edward Wright. And it looks like it does uh, an introduction here by Stuart R. Kaplan. Uh, I won't read it all. It, it just talks about the history of it. Uh, this deck was faithfully reproduced in 1909. So this is the 100th anniversary edition by the looks of it. This is pretty cool actually. And uh, let's see here. So w with this by X Creative, uh, this is actually uh, a U.S. Game Systems deck. If you can see that there, that's their logo. Yeah. So this is actually by U.S. Game Systems. That's the publisher. And let's just see what else there is. Get this fold out here. So this is this is really cool. It talks about the art of divination, and it explains each of the uh, the suits, the the pentacles, swords, wands, and cups. It gives you how to uh, an like an infographic on how to do the Celtic cross spread, or the sorry the Celtic cross spread. Pardon the pronunciation. And then it gives uh, the meanings for, let's see, the Greater Arcana, which is the Major Arcana, so the Magician, the High Priestess, Empress, 
all that. So it's kind of scattered a little bit the way the information is set up, but it's pretty much all there. So this is this is really cool. Uh, a nice little thing to come with it. Very compact. So if you were to take this deck anywhere, you could easily slide this in uh, back into the to the box or just sort of have it attached to the deck with uh, you know like elastics or something like that. So this is pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold this back up. Oh, not really sure how to fold that. Is that it? Yep, yeah, there we go. So this has been I'll fold that. I'll just leave that over there. So let's look at the cards here. So this is the fool. Oh, it doesn't look like it came in any particular order. Oh, that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, no order. Anyways, okay. So the cards feel pretty good. This is the back design. Oops. Whoa, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, it's like backwards. Okay. There we go. Yeah, if you can see that. This is very neat. Oops. And then see if you can... Can you see that there? Yeah, there you go. The cardstock feels really nice. I like this. Um, it doesn't feel like it's two things pushed together. It feels like it's one complete card. It feels very durable that way, and that's nice. So this feels like a deck that you could have for a very long time, and it would last quite a while. And, you, you know, you'd probably rough up the edges a little bit. Oh, and there's the copyright uh, showing it's U.S. Games 2009-2015. So this is definitely a U.S. Games deck by the looks of it. This is a neat design. I I, I kind of like this. Um, this this <laughs> it's funny because this design is actually on a it's on a concrete wall uh, in an intersection uh, near where I live. Uh, it's kind of unique, sort of coincidental maybe, but uh, yeah, this. The cardstock feels really great. I like the design. The The color is actually kind of cool. It's like an off green, almost gray. If you can see that, it's like a grayish green. It's kind of nice, actually. It's, and the colors are quite nice as well. So let's look at the other cards. And this the sun. Yeah. It's interesting. I like the, the muted color uh, tone that they're they're using with this and uh, when we talk about the imagery of tarot uh, the Rider Waite deck is the most well-known tarot deck you could say I mean well I mean that's you could probably make another argument if you wanted to if you want to get down to it uh, but the images and the imagery are usually the uh, most well-known and uh, because of that they're it's a little bit easier to read with a lot of the the text that you'll be reading to help you learn tarot is usually going to be referring to uh, this deck specifically and there'll be other decks out there not by US games you know other publishing companies uh, where the artist is going to be copying you know this style of imagery and doing it in a different way but that's why the imagery is uh, it's so well known and it makes reading uh, the tarot cards a lot easier than some other decks. There's some other decks that have reinterpretations. And that's all well and good. It's fantastic. Um, but, you know, there's something to be said about having, uh, you know, your imagery consistent and uh, well-known when it comes to learning, that is, right? You know, once you get the hang of it, you can do whatever you want. But, yeah, these cards are... They feel really nice. I, I like the... Uh, I like the cardstock. I've already said that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely nice. There's the devil. That's a good one. <laughs> Have you learned beat the devil yet? You can check that out on my site there if you're interested. But these are these are great actually. I I like this. I th this is the first deck that I've had with this exact style of imagery. I've got a few other decks that are sort of, uh, I guess, reinterpretations of these images. So this is the first deck that I have in my collection um, that is based on this imagery. 
Uh, usually you'll you'll see this as a Rider Weight Smith. Uh, that's how people refer to that RWS uh, Smith Weight. No, well, you can call it whatever you want. But uh, let's see here, Death. That's kind of cool. The the symbol on Death there on this flag. If you can, oh, come on, come on. There we go. Yeah. So it's the same symbol on the back of the card. I think that's kind of cool. That. Uh, can have some extra meaning in there. Ace of Cups. The Ten of Cups. Yeah, this is great. And um, let's do this. So I'll pull in. This is a playing card. This is a bicycle uh, model 88 from the uh, United States Playing Card Company. So let's just get a look at the size comparison there. So give you an idea of the size of the card. So they're actually not very big. They're they're rather small compared to other tarot decks in their size. So yeah, look at that. Not not very big. Basically fits almost right on top of it there. If you can see. Just pull out a ruler here and do a quick measurement. This is six six centimeters dead on by and just under ten and a half centimeters, and then a bicycle playing card is about just under nine centimeters by six and a half centimeters or so. So yeah, they're they're quite small, but that's kind of cool. You know, the, it makes it easier to su shuffle. My hands are kind of tiny, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell in the video, but. This deck would be a lot easier to shuffle than some other decks, so this is uh, this is actually a really nice deck. I'm very very impressed with this. I like the uh, the muted colors. The they're very soft on the eyes. It's not very bright, and that's kind of cool. It's like a hushed tone in a way. Just go through all the cards. card. Um, there's no number on this one. This is weird. I'm thinking this is the lover's card. Huh. That's interesting. Let's see what else. Maybe there's something cool that we missed that we can talk about maybe. Hanged man. So yeah, the major kind of have the numbers there, but let's go back to that lover's card. See if we can. Oh, we've lost it. Oops, I'm just making a mess now. <laughs> Probably put it right here. Oh, there it was the whole time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what else the justice is. Eleven. So that's a night. Nice, uh, that's a nice little uh, distinction. Some decks have justice as eight, and strength as eleven. So that's kind of one thing that you can, if you, when you look at the deck, it'll kind of tell you more about the uh, history of the deck a little bit. Let's just see what else we got. Maybe there's something cool that we could talk about here. Nope. Looks like everything's pretty normal. Yeah, something like this wouldn't have a number. It's the oh, that's the five pentacles. I got five of them there. Yeah, so there we go. But yeah, that's a neat little. I guess you could call that an Easter egg if you want to talk about it like that. Let's just. Get a feel for this. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move these up here. Let's just do a quick shuffle and just feel, get a feel of it. Yeah, that feels really good. And then you can do the, the side shuffle like this. That feels nice. And so. 
with this type of deck, the Rider Waite Smith deck, it uses reversal meaning. So when the card is like upright, it mean it has one meaning, and when it's upside down, it has another meaning. And a good way to shuffle the deck is to just do a wash like this, and you just spin the cards around and mix them all up. And this is a good way to really randomize everything and give yourself a, an opportunity to have the cards kind of take whatever shape they want, upright or reversed. And I think it's a good way to shuffle your cards. So I'll make sure I get this all in the frame there. So they're all shuffled like that. And I'm actually going to bring up my sage here. And we're just going to clear the deck. We're going to sage it. I got this uh, bundle of sage on a mountain in the Okanagan of British Columbia, actually. I picked it myself. I climbed the mountain and found it, and I kind of bundled it together. It's a little old. It's just the stems are kind of burning, but gets the job done. So if you're just saging your cards, you just uh, kind of make sure you get the smoke over top of it. There's no wrong way to sage cards, I guess. There's no method. You just do that. Maybe you can see the smoke in the video. Yeah, there you go. You can see that. Oh, yeah, that's enough. I'll just stamp it out. So I've got uh, sage ash in there. It's like the ashes. Okay, that's stamped out. Okay. So that's how I would clear my cards if I was going to clear them. And then I would shuffle it like this. And I, I would clear the cards like this too. Like I would do the wash exactly like this and then have the sage kind of spill over it. And then you just collect up your cards and just shuffle them. I need to fix my table, I think, because it's moving. That's okay. But this feels like a really great deck. I highly recommend it to anyone starting out reading tarot. Uh, again, the, the benefit would be that the imagery is consistent among the writing that you'll be using to help understand your, uh, sort of improve your knowledge of tarot, so that's a nice thing. And you have the reverse meanings to use in your reading as well. Some decks uh, just don't have clear reverse meanings or they weren't written into the guidebook or you know, any number of reasons. Uh, it's it's really uh, the artist's interpretation of the cards. They they sort of dictate, um, you know, how you can read them in, in a lot of ways. So this deck, uh, it's quite complex. The imagery has a lot of information to use when you're reading the cards. Uh, things uh, that combine with other other images in the deck. Uh, and it's it's a great style of deck, I think. And uh, with the Centennial edition, I think this is this is great. I'm actually I'm really happy that I got this deck. Uh, <laughs> should sound more excited, but let's yeah. I'm just gonna shuffle it here. I like the cards and how it shuffles. It feels it just feels really good. The cards feel sturdy. Okay, so we're done. I will leave you with a quick little three card spread. I don't know if I want to try and read this with you here because it's on the spot, but uh, we'll just do that. See, see what we get. Oh, that's, yeah, that's cute. We've got the fool there. And the eight of pentacles and strength. Okay, well that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, get this deck, I highly recommend it. And uh, read well, and we'll see you out there. Bye. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so I made a mistake. I wanted to 
hop back on the uh, camera here and uh, just clarify something real quick. I don't want to be caught with my pants down giving bad information. Uh, when I was looking at this card, I thought it was the lovers. And uh, I was kind of confused when I was making the video because it didn't have any numbers and you know whatnot. So I just I thought, oh, well, this must be the lovers card. Uh, but it's not. The lovers card is here. Right here in the deck. Uh, so I wanted to just clarify that because that caught me off guard because when I saw this card, I thought, oh, what's what's this? What's going on? And it, it all kind of just made sense. So I thought to myself, well, why don't I just put these cards all in order just to make sure they're here. You know, you, ne uh, you never know. You could be caught with something. Uh, you know, you may not be playing with a full deck, as they say. <laughs> So everything's accounted for. You got I got all the suits here. I've got uh, all the trump cards, the major arcana, and these two extra cards here. So it actually came with 80 cards. So 78 plus these two. I'm actually not 100% sure uh, what these uh, two cards mean, uh, but you know what? I'll find out. I'll I'll do some research and. Uh, if it's anything interesting, maybe I'll make another video or write an article about it. So that's all I really wanted to say. I just wanted to clarify that because uh, this is not the lover's card. Although it looks like two lovers. So it's kind of neat. And then this card. It's kind of cool as well. Maybe this is just a card to fill up a... Uh, like a, an order, like how they would cut the cards, like maybe they just had like, you know, back in the day when they were uh, making these cards, maybe there, you could only print 80 at a time and you couldn't print 78, so uh, it could be possible that uh, the artist uh, just came up with these designs to fill up the order of 80 cards and now we've got these two cards to play around with. It could be neat. You could maybe use these as markers of some kind in readings to kind of uh, show you where you're focusing your attention on. I don't know. I'll have to try and find a use for these. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so I hope that clarified things a bit. I didn't want to throw any of you off, uh, especially if you're seasoned in uh, tarot reading. You must be thinking like, that's not the lover's card there, buddy. It's something else. If you know what this is, I'd love to hear from you. You can have a comment below there or email me from my website. I'll put a bunch of links at the bottom of the video there so you can read more about what I talk about on our website. But that's it. That's all I wanted to come out and say. Think of this as uh, an extra coda, an extended ending for the video here. And I'll leave you with that. Thanks for your time and uh, read well and be safe.